Las Vegas massacre that recently occurred. Thank you. Up first is Bruce Bandler, the administrator, so we can go ahead and get the program started. Is this good? Too loud? Good? Thank you for coming to the Hurricane Irma Special Assessment Meeting. Be a thousand dollars for everybody who came today, nothing for those that didn't come. No special assessment. A couple of months ago, people on North Road got a letter from the Turnpike Authority, and it said, oh, good news, you're going to get a wall for the Turnpike. Well, that's like selling ice in the wintertime. If you really read the letter, it was all biased to get you to send in comments to the state so they have it on record that you're happy with what's going on. You're not happy with what's going on, okay? And we have the good hats here, the people that fight the battles, and they're going to help us, and this project is going to be defeated. I know you hear the term done deal, where they said that when it came to waste management and other things, it's not a done deal. You are the people, we have powerful people here, these are the white hats right here, okay, and we're going to defeat those other people. Now you received the package when you walked in today, everybody got it? The first page is your comments, you're going to be hearing things today, it's going to get you riled up, we want you to write things. Right, nasty, you know, some of you know how to do that. I've seen, I've seen that. And uh, you may be asked in the future, write another one before the October 17th meeting. So, and we'll prep you with emails. Is everybody on the email list, Fred's email? Yeah. All right, that was good. If you're not on Fred's email list, uh, on the bottom of the form, on the comment form, it tells you how to get on. So please get on so that you're informed with everything. And. Uh, you know everything that's going on, whether it's about the turnpike or other things. The second page of the handout was October 17th. That's the big meeting. We need double what we have here. We don't expect you to go to the community center in your cars because uh, they don't have enough parking. We're going to have buses shuttling through here, taking you over there, and then we'll shuttle you on. So uh, if the schedule is on there. Please follow it. Park your cars here, track 1000 at the country club, and we'll take you from those two spaces. We need as many people as possible. We're also going to have t-shirts for that day. It's going to say, uh, win more strong. Okay. And whether it's hurricanes or whatever, we all win more strong. As, as you can see, we're different than other communities. It's a beautiful shirt. I've seen it. It's on sale if you order now. They'll be available next week through the Recreation Office, so keep your ears you know, open and you'll just get an email from Jaquia when they're available. Um, there's going to be a question and answer session here today. It'll probably be limited to about 20 minutes because it's going to be repetitious. But after this, we're going to have refreshments in the West Wing. <laughs> I know that's why you're all here at the Solway. And you saw refreshments on the bottom, so where are they? They're at the West Wing. And they'll be available right after the meeting. And um, this is, like I said, this is a very special. Thing. And it doesn't happen by itself. It's leadership. We have a wonderful leader. Whether it's preparing for hurricanes, something like this, dealing with the hospitals, dealing with everyone. We are very fortunate to have a president like Jackie Gray. Come on, Jackie. Jackie didn't know she was going to speak today, so uh, let's go ahead and Good morning. As far as I'm concerned right now, we're all winners. I can't believe this turnout. I thank you so much. You actually... You realize that you are important and that you can make a difference, and we will make a difference. Trust me, there is no compromise with this. We will win. This expansion is not going to happen, at least not on their terms. It will be on our terms. 
First, I don't do this alone. I have a team behind me, and I thank each and every one of you. I'm going to tell you, um, I will, when I give the names of our officers, please stand up because we are scattered around. First, Vice President Neil Noda. Second, Vice President Chick Chase. Third, Vice President Selma Bass. Stan Cohen, our fourth Vice President. Larry Schwartz, our secretary. And unfortunately, Bill Corey, our new treasurer, um, he just got out of the hospital actually, had a couple of stents put in, and he's in for a checkup right now. But he's doing great, and he sends his support. We're very fortunate to have and to be living in a wonderful city, Coconut Creek. It's our sleepy town that nobody heard about years ago, but after this, everybody will know Coconut Creek. Now, we have with us, and the commissioners did want to be here, the mayor and the commissioners did want to be with us to show their support, but because of the Sunshine Law, they are unable to be here. So, but we do have an amazing team from the city. We have our city manager, Mary Blasey. We have Sheila Rose, our assistant city manager. Bear with me, please. <laughs> Scott Stoudemire. Okay. <laughs> Karen Brooks, Deputy City Manager. And last but not least, our attorney, our county commissioner, Mark Bogan. And with Mark, we have Michael Keir. Her, sorry. From the county attorney's office. So we are well represented. This is just the beginning. Right now, I am going to leave all the details to the experts, but I want every one of you leaving here knowing that you're entitled to your quality of life, that they cannot impede on everything that we've worked so hard to achieve. So feel empowered feel positive, and we will win this. Okay, are we feeling good? Okay, great. And I am going to let the experts take over for us. Thank you. job of New York City is the second, Coconut Creek must be the third. <laughs> but, but they did, when it came to waste management, and took on the big dogs, it was incredible, and again, it was help. <laughs> so, I'm say, these are the experts. I'm going to give it to Mary, and she'll talk about our team and organization. Does this work? Oh, wonderful. Can I come up front here? Are you guys okay with that? How many people here were uh, here when we were fighting waste management when I was standing here? Yeah. Uh, with our county commissioner, Mark Bogan, and a lot of work, but especially you guys. If it wasn't for Winmore, we wouldn't have prevailed. We wouldn't have. Your political clout at the county commission and in all agencies in this state is very important and without you we will not prevail with this turnpike authority issue 
Uh, we just recently found out about this. Uh, this isn't something that's been on the table for a long time. Back in 2006, we had meetings like this, but it was only for an expansion of one lane on each side. And it was something that was anticipated for a long time, an eight lane uh, turnpike. And at the time, they, you guys were amazing. You went to our, uh, our county commissioner at the time, uh, Kristen Jacobs, and she was very involved with ensuring that you got a wall at that time to lower the decibels uh, for the noise pollution and to ensure that the construction uh, issues would be, would be minimalized. And that was all done. And then they ran out of money. The economic downturn came uh, in 2008 and when they were going to start construction and they couldn't get the financing to do it. So it was put on the back table. So 2006, all these environmental studies are done. 2008, the economic downturn comes down. And now 2016, 2017, they decide very quietly to change that two lanes, and she will get into this more, but change that two lane expansion, one on the east, one on the west, to a four lane expansion with none on the east and all on the west, with realigning the center over to the west and putting in four lanes of express lanes, so a toll on toll that has never been done in our state before with terrible dollars. And then Sheila, our project manager, uh, Sheila Rose, uh, uh, assistant city manager and director of uh, sustainable development is amazing and you'll see how amazing she is. Um, when it comes to uh, her intelligence on issues as it relates to transportation and development and impacts of all those and her uh, networking abilities throughout the state and the county, um, we, we in the city have an amazing group of people and we work really hard uh, to stop things like this. Uh, waste management, multi-billion dollar uh, international company that we fought and we won. Um, if you can tell now, the, the odors at the landfill are really bad right now. And that will happen for a couple more months because the one thing that we had to give in in our agreement with them was that if there's a state of emergency, which was just called by the governor uh, for Hurricane Irma, that our agreement goes to the wayside for a while. So the odors you smell now are the ones that would have been forever if we hadn't fought it. And they were bad. I came on the turnpike today and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to call it in so bad. But they're allowed to do that because they put our agreement aside. So with this turnpike, it's another thing. They're a multi-billion, if not trillion dollar agency in the state. They're an enterprise fund, which means that they do not get any money really from the federal government for this. All the tolls pay basically pay for their uh, expansion projects. So it, uh, we're doing some research now, but I believe those two, those four express lanes they want to put in, which by the way, you have to put in two on each side, otherwise it's unsafe. They can't put one express lane on each side because it's separated from the rest of the, the traffic. So, you know, if uh, you know if somebody gets stalled, it's backed up forever. But I think, I believe that they're doing that so that they can get the revenue from it to get the financing for the expansion. And we're doing that research because they, when we brought it up at the commission workshop that we had last week, and there is a video of that workshop, and I think Fred is going to send it out to everybody so you can watch it. It's very detailed. It has the Turnpike Authority people there. It has our state rep, Kristen Jacobs. Mark's office is represented. Uh, Congressman Deutsch's office is represented. Um, our college president was there, and all of our commissioners. And they're totally on board with fighting this. We have hired an attorney out of Tallahassee that specializes in this type of issue. And he's on board with his team. We have also hired a civil engineer who specializes in environmental studies as it relates to the Florida Department of Transportation and Terminal. So. But please, all of you, if you can, be there on the 17th. And we need something written from you. So we're going to be sending out uh, emails to Bruce, which he'll forward to you, that basically he'll have a link that you can 
press it, it'll basically fill out the email for you and who it should go to, and you can fill in anything else that you like to put in, like where you're located and how it's going to impact you. But those, and I'm going to read off the, 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 the four different uh, areas that are going to be uh, impacted the most. So if you're in one of those, raise your hand. Uh, Andros, Abaco, Eleuthera, Bermuda. Okay. Please be there. We need you. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Sheila Rose, our Assistant City Manager and Director of Sustainable Development. She's the project manager. She's the one doing all of the front work and the leadership on this. So thank you. Thank you, Mary. I'm going to take just a minute um, and try to give you some of the technical details. And the purpose of today's meeting is to get you prepared and organized so that our presentation to the Turnpike Authority on October 17th is as substantive and as effective as possible. Um, oftentimes when we have large crowds attend these public hearings, uh, they get raucous. Uh, what's really important is that we send very clear and pointed messages. So I'm going to start by saying don't kill the messenger. Um, as you know, I work for the City of Coconut Creek and I'm going to try to share with you the technical data related to the project so that you'll have a better understanding of what's proposed. So currently, this is what the turnpike looks like. There's six lanes in both, I mean, in the, three in each direction. Um, you get on, you get off, uh, but it's meant to be a long distance carrier facility. It's not an interstate highway facility. It's the road less stressed. Well, what they're proposing is not the road less stressed. This is what they're proposing, which is 10 lanes. Now, how many of you have been to Miami recently? Have we seen the batter poles, the broken down yellow sticks in the middle of the roads? That's what's proposed in this instance, so that the interior four lanes will be divided from the general purpose lanes that already exist. You'll have to pay an additional toll, and you'll have to live with the cars jutting in and out of these facilities. The other issue, very clearly when you see it in Miami, and I've got a couple of pictures to show you, is those poles don't last. Look, they're broken up. I mean, that certainly isn't what I perceive as the less stressed way. And if you've been to Miami, this is not a less stressed way to get there. What Mary mentioned earlier was that in 2006 there was an environmental study and the staff is very focused on picking apart the technical issues so that we have a credible fight with the turnpike. We're at a little bit of a disadvantage because they own the property. So the focus is on the impacts on the adjacent properties. In 2006, the department did what's referred to as a project development and environmental study, or a state environmental impact study, very similar to an environmental impact study you might hear about with the federal government. What they're proposing, now, 11 years later, is just to say, oh, well, we already got that approved, so we're gonna start from our 2006 approvals, and we're just gonna reevaluate the things that have changed. So, so the reason I display this table is because this is the front page in their document, and you'll see these documents at this public meeting, that is referred to as their re-evaluation of that project. Now remember, that project in 2006 was an eight-lane project with one lane on both sides. Interesting, the Turnpike did not even remember that they had struck an agreement with Widmore in 2006 related to extending noise walls, additional landscaping. They'd forgotten all about that. They hadn't even included that in this project. And that project was eight lanes. So basically it was 12 feet of asphalt on the west side of the road. We're now in some areas talking about 48 feet of asphalt. And they had ignored those commitments from 2008. So I think that's really important. So I just want to walk through this 
checklist so that you see the points that we're going to need to make on the record so that they're forced to take them into consideration. You'll note the categories are social and economic. And look at all of the X's under the no category. According to the Turnpike's engineering team, the change in the project from what was envisioned in 2006, which was the eight lane project, one lane on both sides, to what's proposed today in 2017, didn't have any significant social, economic, land use, mobility, aesthetic, or relocation impacts. None. They're, they're, they're analyzing it, the project themselves, so they're making these interpretations, but in their opinion, no impacts. They didn't even restudy the economic impact to win more. They did not even study it for this new proposal. If we get into the cultural areas, yeah, they're impacting Trade Winds Park. Yeah, they're going to look at buying a small piece of right away from Trade Winds Park, but it's very small. So they've made a presentation about how they're improving Trade Winds Park. They're not putting in noise walls in Trade Winds Park. All they're doing is maintaining the existing road that connects the north half from the south half. The natural environment. They're saying, oh yes, we're having an impact on the drainage. Well, yeah, there are uh, drainage canals, particularly in the South Creek area, separating the turnpike from the residents. There are drainage areas that provide a buffer. What's proposed now is to move the road so there's no room for drainage. So the drainage is proposed to go all to the east. So they're reevaluating that. But they certainly aren't looking at it from a negative perspective. They're only looking at it from how they have addressed the drainage in a positive way. I think there are some real issues related to the drainage. Um, the physical impacts, yeah, they say they've looked at that. It, it's, it's startling to say, and, and I will admit, and you don't feel the messenger, but the data that we're receiving from the turnpike is changing every day. We received a new traffic noise analysis last night, night before last. Uh, 243 pages, and the expectation is that you will have had time to review that document and be educated and, and able to comment at the October 17th meeting. So those, those documents are changing every day. Um, we do think uh, making the turnpike aware that people are concerned is bringing them to the table. Originally, the plans, let's say two weeks ago, showed 12 foot and 14 foot barrier walls. Miraculously overnight, they changed to 22 foot walls. So we do believe there is time to influence this project. Again, I want to talk about this idea of toll on toll. Uh, this is a new proposal. Right now, the turnpike, you, you, everybody has gone on to the automated toll system. What this is proposing are those high-speed express lanes. If you read the Miami Herald, if you read the Sun Sentinel, those express lanes in Miami-Dade County are being questioned because of the accidents. Because the accidents they're causing in the lanes, because the inability for a police officer to stop a speeding vehicle in those express lanes. It's been determined that it is unsafe for a state trooper to pull somebody over an express lane because there's no place for anybody to get out and write a ticket. So we have now the potential of unlimited speed. The other thing that this toll on toll concept does is it forces all the trucks to the outside lane. You know, most of us can hear the difference. A car is a whoop, 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 but a truck is a hur, 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 hur. The truck sounds, the truck sounds are at a different tone. They are disturbing. They're disturbing uh, well into the night, and oftentimes the truck traffic goes well into the night. So we think that warrants consideration. Um, some of the good things that they're proposing uh, are modifications to the interchanges. Uh, Coconut Creek Parkway is proposed to be changed, and right now that's a little bit of a confusing issue 
uh, the city of Pompano has recently built a median, a beautiful landscape median on Coconut Creek Parkway, MLK into Pompano, but it's caused the inability to make that left-hand turn onto Blount Road. Uh, the Turnpike is proposing to provide for an on-ramp for Coconut Creek Parkway, and it sounds like a great idea, uh, but it certainly will impact the Junior Achievement Facility. I think that needs to be studied, uh, although their suggestion is that it is just a ramp that goes by the Junior Achievement Facility. When you start looking at the construction details, it's an earthen berm ramp, so it's elevated. So the school will now be tucked down in a hole behind a ramp entering the turnpikes. We think those are all concerns. So you should, I encourage you to study these interchange proposals. Um, we do have some questions regarding them. They could go to Sample Road, but in general, they simplify the movements. Right now, the two interchanges in Coconut Creek are fairly complicated, uh, and I just wanted to bring these to your attention so you, you saw what they're proposing. Go on, Pablo, one more. This is just an example, and, and you know, go, ooh, ooh. Right, right now, the existing noise at one particular receiver that was studied in, in, in a computer model, you know, in a computer model, not necessarily standing on somebody's fourth floor balcony, was in Abaco, the fourth floor was 56 decibels. What's proposed in 2030, or what's anticipated without a noise wall, is 71 decibels. And unfortunately, a fourth floor unit does not get any benefit from a 22-foot wall. Only the units immediately adjacent to a wall actually receive a benefit. The noise has a tendency to travel over the wall and right to those upper floors. And then it travels down, and in many instances, particularly in Winmore, across a water body and into your back porch. Just to give you an understanding of noise, and this is an interesting topic that you may want to research, noise is perceived to increase exponentially. It's not like three decibels is just three decibels. Three decibels increases exponentially. So when we look at, for instance, it's very quiet in here right now, it's about 50 decibels. But if you were to stand next to a diesel truck, it'd be 80. That's what that feels like. So what the turnpike is talking about are considerable health and quality of life impacts in Winmore. The other issue that we'd like to show, and, and you know, this is always set aside by all of these road construction agencies. Oh, we'll deal with the construction noise. Don't worry about that. Well, this construction project is proposed to extend from four to five years. That's not, that's not 90 days. That's not two weeks without power. That's four to five years where you are going to be experiencing not only construction delays, you're going to be experiencing construction impacts, vibrations, noise, the beep, 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 beep of heavy equipment backing up, the evening or nighttime lighting, those high lightings that keep the workers on the roadways safe. That's what you're going to be experiencing unless we're able to stop this project. Go on, pop one more. Now this is, this is what a typical noise wall looks like. It's not very pretty. I bring this to your attention because noise walls are not the panacea. Right now, the proposal from the turnpike requires that all the landscaping be removed in many areas. Now, this is not a beautiful wall. It's particularly not a beautiful wall when it's poorly maintained, when it gets molded, and when there's no ability to install landscaping on either side. Go on to the next one. 
This is what the construction could look like. And this is just a snippet of what you will see as they are expanding to the west. These heavy vehicles, these workers, will be out there on the road for four to five years doing this type of work. I bring this slide to your attention because the one thing that we overlook and that we don't have the technical data to address is how high the road is going to be as it relates to your backyards. Right now, the proposal, and when you, when you look at the turnpike, when you peek through the fence, when you look through the landscaping, you see a dip and a swale. In this instance, the proposal is to extend the road and in fact, to elevate it slightly so that, because there's just not enough room for them to maintain that green buffer on the side of the road. So you'll see these types of construction activities where they're actually building up the earth to accommodate the road expansion. One more follow up. So that's why we think this is really important that you have a thorough understanding of what's proposed and if you don't have a thorough understanding, you have a thorough understanding of how important it is that you ask those questions. You ask the questions about the air quality. You ask the question about why is my car black in the morning and is that going to get worse? You ask the questions about what are the long-term health impacts of continued noise so that we put those items on the record. This is a very formal process that the Department of Transportation goes through. This is an informal meeting. Our expectation is that there'll be a table very similar to this at that meeting, and each one of those panelists will say, thank you for your comment, we'll take that into consideration. Thank you for your comment, we'll take that into consideration. What we need to do is make sure they take that into consideration. October 17th is the public hearing. There's two weeks following that date to provide written comments, but it is also vitally important that the turnpike hear from those people that have the authority to stop them, and that's your elected representatives. So the city will be providing you links and ways to communicate with your elected representatives so that they address not just what's proposed in Winmore's backyard, but the bigger policy issues of, is this right for South Florida? So with that, we've got very specific graphics um, out in the lobby. What we are hoping to do is encourage you to take those public hearing notices, to get educated, to ask questions. I know Commissioner Bogan would like to wrap it up and add some additional information. Thank you. Good morning. First, um, it's great to be able to work with people that know about a fight. Mary Blasey, City Manager Coconut Creek, she's great to work with. She has great to work with. We've got an administrator from Bruce Bandler, we've got a president, we've got a management staff. I'm serious, they're really great to work with. I want to first talk about something before we get to this issue. When I was elected three years ago, the first fight I had in representing you was what we talked about earlier, what Mary talked about, it was waste management was putting unlimited amounts of waste in that mountain, we'll call it, and you smelled a lot of horrible odors, you saw a lot of birds, we fought together, and we stopped them from putting unlimited amounts of waste. That's one. Two. That's okay. Two. They wanted to do a deep well permit just a year ago where they were gonna put toxic liquid, untreated toxic liquid into the ground going right near your drinking water. They didn't care, they were gonna do it. We worked together, we stopped that. But let me tell you, this is really serious. This proposal in front of you, as Sheila just mentioned, will, as years of construction, 
you've got noise, you've got pollution, your property values are going to go down, your, your quality of life is going to go down. I don't care where you live here in Winmore, whether you live near it or not, you're going to be affected. It's horrible. So as your elected official, I'm going to fight like hell to kill this thing. I'm telling you from today on. So let me tell you what that fight's going to entail. First, the city has agreed to hire a law firm out of Tallahassee that specializes in this type of law. So we've got a law firm that's going to be fighting this in one angle. Second, I've asked the county attorney, so I'm your county commissioner and then you have city commissioners. I've asked, your county, I've asked the county attorney's office, we have 40 county attorneys, to help. And so Mike Kerr, I'm going to call him up in a second, who's sitting here. Mike works with the county attorney's office, and they're going to see how they can also help. So we've got a, a law firm in Tallahassee that specializes. We're going to have the county attorney's office. If we have to file privately our law firm lawsuits, we're going to fight them in court if we have to do it that way. And the cost to you will be zero. Zero. Last is politically. Winmore, I don't know if you realize, I just I realized this once I got elected, was you are considered one of the top ten voting blocks in Broward County. And people, politicians, whether you're Republican or Democrat, they look at how many people come out to vote from communities. It's so important to get everybody to come out and vote and where they're going to go, oh, this community turns out not 10%, not 20%, but 30, 40, 50%. Coming out to vote is important. So politically, what I am doing also is we're contacting the chairman of the Appropriations Committee in the state of Florida to see if he can help. He's a state senator. He's going to be running for governor. We're using somebody to contact the governor's office. Might be a waste of time, might not, we're going to try it. We're going to try every person running for governor, every person running for U.S. Senate that, that will want votes. So besides legal, we're going to try political. We're going to try every angle possible uh, in this fight. So I just want to go for that fight. Also, um, you want me to... James Comer from the MPO, where's James? Hi, uh, James. Hope the MPO can also help us out. The MPO stands for the Metropolitan Planning Organization. I think I sit on that board, don't I? And um, they can also be of help, and we're going to be talking to them October 12th. I think there's a meeting, and we'll be talking to them. We're going to use everything we can to fight this and to do what we need to do. We need to be organized. Let me tell you what's also important. Usually, these public hearings, when people come and talk, my feeling was, you're just, it's a waste of time. These people, they're not listening to you. Well, let me tell you, I'm wrong. They put it in the record. You need to come October is it the 17th. You need to come and bring a neighbor. We need to double the size here, and we need to put something in writing. Because when you put it in writing, it goes into the record. When you speak, it goes into the record. The only thing today you have is this document here. And in the document, it says, I have some concerns. You don't have any concerns. You oppose this. It's not like we have a concern. We need to be together opposing this expansion. Okay? The only concern I have is why these idiot politicians have done are doing this to you. They can care less about win more. They can care less about where this is going. Look at this. I want to show you. If this is the wall right here, they are proposing Winmore's property would be right about here. That would be the wall. This would be Winmore's property line. That close. That's how horrible this is. I mean, this is going to affect everybody. So, with that, Mike, come on up for a second. I want to, I want to introduce you to a gentleman. He, they've got great resources with the county, and um, I want to just to introduce Mike. Tell him what, what great things we're going to be doing. This is a tough act to follow. This is kind of a deja vu moment for me because my mother used to be a nurse when you had a clinic uh, on site here. So I knew how to get here. But anyway, basically, Commissioner Bogan, a 
approached me in my office uh, to see what, how we could help. Um, I've been doing construction, law, and litigation for 32 years my entire career and have been doing it for almost 29 years for the county. So basically what we're going to start, we're going to start it today, is researching what sort of entry points we have into the process, if possible. We don't know what the county's standing would be, but we're going to at least start the research process to see if there's a way we can help. And then we'll be re uh, obviously coordinating with the commissioner Bogan and the county commission to see what our next steps will be. Thank you. Last, I just want to also let you know, Ron Lickman, Ron, just wave your hand there. So I'm going to sign my staff. So what you don't know, at the county commission, we get staff that works on issues with the public. I'm going to sign my staff, at least one staff member, full time to this project. We're going to make this a full time effort to fight this. So whether it be legally, whether it be with the county, whether it be private attorneys, whether it be politically, we're going to be working full time, just so you know, to fight this. You've got a great team with you as well. And, and if there's anything that you have suggestions, ideas, whatever, please call. Let me know, let us know. I hope everyone has given their email address to Fred Michael, because that's the way we're going to be able to communicate with you. So if you haven't given your email address to Fred, please do so. Um, I, I'm just looking here. I think I've gone over everything. Um, I look forward to seeing everybody at 17. Uh, we need to scream and holler and make things in writing that we oppose this. And I look forward to working with everybody. Thank you. I hear the name Fred Michael. Fred Michael. Do you know what he looks like? Yeah. Fred, stand up. Yes, Fred. <laughs> We're in the hurricane. He's got 17 updates. We also have a representative from Kristen Jacobs' office, District 96, Jeff, Jeff Scala in the background. Everybody's on your side, so this is good. We're going to take questions and answers. That's how we're going to do it. Where are the hostesses? Get them down. They're going to get the microphones. You raise your hand. The, the, the experts here will sit at the table and they'll take your questions. So uh, the uh, hostesses will go row by row and try to get as many as possible. We'll do this for about a half hour. It's going to start getting repetitious. And then we'll go to the West Wing. We'll have some refreshments. And you can talk one-on-one -on -one with these experts that we have here. So uh, let me give this microphone back to the table. And uh, the hostesses will go, this hostess first, and this hostess will go back and forth. So if the hostesses will go to the first person. Yeah, my question now is I asked uh, before is the eminent domain, which is something that uh, that uh, concerns me very much, and also uh, you mentioned uh, the, the federal uh, involvement in money on these things. Uh, what is the uh, possibility that we have to appeal to them as well? Yeah. The unfortunate part of this process is that the turnpike has enough right of way, so they have enough legal land to do the project that's proposed. So they're not they're not looking at an eminent domain situation uh, as it relates. If they did, that would be wonderful. We're we're trying to see what the requirements are in terms of having, uh, like Commissioner Bogan said, there's only five feet on the other side of the wall that's actually their right of way that is going to be used to maintain the wall on on your side. Is that enough? Is that what's required? Um, maybe they do need to, to purchase more right of way or of course you guys wouldn't give it to them so they'd have to go through the eminent domain process um, which would take a lot of time. But um, right, that's the only down downturn and, and issue that we have to do is the only piece of property they need to buy, or two pieces, is one at Tradewinds Park, which is a county park, and Broward College. And uh, so those are the, they don't have to purchase anything from any residential areas. Does the governor of our state aware of what's going on here? And if not, what does it take to get him involved. 
Well, as you know, that everyone here is a registered Republican, right? I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Um, um, you know, even though I, I'm, a, you know, most everybody views Broward County as Democratic. Um, I do know a friend of the governor's. He's been a friend of the governor's for 20 years before he became governor. He's a lobbyist, um, and I'm working through him and talking. You know, the governor is now he's termed out. He's going to be running for U.S. Senate. And um, there's an old saying, politics makes strange bedfellows, right? Uh, we, need, we need help. This is the most important issue of Winmore in my mind and, and since the uh, Winmore has come in to be exist. So, so I, I'm going to reach out and um, to the governor's, uh, we have already reached out to the governor's friend and uh, he's trying to set up a meeting between me and, and the governor's chief of staff and um, see if he can be a hero to us. I want to ask all of you if you want to be flooded like in Houston. Water flooding all Willow and even Coconut Creek. Remember, in the name of Coconut Creek, there is a word that is crucial. It's called creek, meaning that the drainage of this area goes into the creek. Okay, if you have a catastrophic drain in this area, it's gonna go into the creek and it's gonna go into coconut, into Wimore, and it's gonna flood it. Fifteen years ago, I was in the rural area of Miami, and we have in an afternoon a catastrophic drain. I saw the, the water dry, rise in, in the rural area 20 inches in about three hours. What is going to happen in the turnpike is that it is going to become a collection area for the water and it's going to flood it all this area. To me, that the Achilles heel or all this project is no noise, it's no dust, it's no anything. It's water. Water is completely unpredictable as we have seen all over the place and is the thing that we can attack in the state that is going to have to protect us. It may not be tomorrow. It may be something because we are going to have a tremendous rain. And rains are completely unpredictable. I have seen catastrophic rains that you can get in the, in the um, uh, drain way, uh, uh, edges. It can go in, a, in, in an afternoon three feet for brain. So, to me, that's the thing that we should concentrate. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I think the gentleman makes a very good point. Uh, the proposal from the Turnpike proposes to acquire a piece of property on the east side of, of the Turnpike and pipe the drainage to the east side. As we all know, pipes get clogged. Uh, as we take down more and more of uh, vegetation, the drainage increases. So it, it's a very valid point. Thank you. Wait, before we ask one question, I was remiss in saying, yesterday I did speak to our state senator, which you, Kevin Rader is your state senator. Spoke to him. He's going to be trying to help. I spoke to Congressman Ted Deutsch. He's going to try to help. We have Teresa, two Teresas. Teresa from, where's Teresa from? Uh, Teresa, okay, we got two Teresas from uh, one from Ted Boyd's office and Ken Raider's office. So if you need them, they're right there. But as Bruce said, everybody here is going to be working together to help. Okay, I live in Abaco. I'm Mary Summer. I live in 1601. I love it here. I retired from North Naval Shipyard. I know about noise firsthand, folks. I am hearing the pair to have a 75% loss of one year, 25% loss of the other year. I don't understand my grandchildren. OSHA says that when noise is 85 decibels or more, hearing aid, hearing devices are required. Are you ready to walk around with earplugs all the time or with earmuffs? 
I did it. I still lost my hearing. If you go in the parking lot right now of 1601 Abaco, my dear friend Sharon, the other day was in the parking lot and said to my wife, she said, boy, is it noisy here now because we lost our natural sound barrier. Because of a hurricane, we lost all of our trees. So that's one problem we have. The trees are not going to grow back overnight. But they say they're going to put a sound wall up. That's great. It doesn't help 1601 because if you look on the, uh, the picture they have, we're having the interchange there where the, road, where the traffic's going to go in and out. And uh, FDOT has already said at the last meeting we had that they're not going to put sound walls there because, quote unquote, they're not needed because the roadway is elevated there. They must think I'm totally stupid. I'm half Polish, but I'm not dumb. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at that point, that means the sound's going to be up even higher. So those of us who in Navico live on the third floor or on the fourth floor, as in my case, we're going to get it even worse. I am upset. Yes, it's great that we have this turnout. When, I, when we had a meeting the other day, I, uh, Abaco meeting, I said we need to have 941 people here. This room sits 940 people. We don't have it. We've got to get everyone out. We've got to overflow the community center. This is more than quality of life. In some people's cases, it is your life. You get a lot of dust and all going around. A lot of us, myself included, have respiratory problems. What in the world is that going to do to you? Are we now going to all have to walk around with oxygen? Harry, thank you so much. Okay, we're going to try to keep down to two minutes of person. I'm going to ask you a question specifically for the experts. We all know the problems. These are, okay, let's go. I wanted to know if the state of Florida requires an updated and verified environmental impact statement for this group, and if so, how far along are they, and also do they have a deadline? I'll, I'll try to address that, and I try I, because it's a fairly complicated topic. It is our opinion that they do require an updated environmental impact statement. It is their opinion that the reevaluation that they've done is sufficient. So, in their opinion, they have completed their environmental impact statement, and they are into the design. Their expectation is that the design plans will be complete after the first of the year. So in their mind, they have addressed the environmental issues. What we need to show them is that they haven't. And we are asking that they go back and start that environmental impact statement over. My name is Pete Ballerina. I've been coming to Woodmore for 10 years. I own a place here 10 years. I live in Long Island. I think this is disgusting. I come and go, I retired from American Airlines. 50 years retired. So I fly whenever I want to come here. I think Wimbledon was the greatest place I've ever seen in my life. I think this is disgusting. And if you need a representative to speak, I'll speak to the President of the United States because I got guts. beautiful place to come. And if you don't think that that retainer wall is going to be ugly, as she said, dirty, my word is graffiti, okay? Graffiti will, if you don't believe me, I can show you places where three turnpikes did expand and their wall is full of graffiti, okay? So that's another impact. And the express lanes don't work because most people don't use it because the price goes up higher the more traffic you have. So the people who don't want to pay those are still going to be in those right lanes as space quoted up there. Those trucks will be over in all those lanes. Nobody will be using those express lanes. We don't need express lanes on Winmore's side.
Frank was more brilliant than I looked at Cambridge. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. Um, was there a study done that there was a necessity to enlarge this? I mean, I'm on that, I'm on that road uh, four or five times a, a week, and I'm, I don't see the overcrowding. But so where, where was I? I mean, what, whatever happened? I mean, the road, I mean, it's not like downtown Miami. I never have a problem on that, on that road. And I travel it all the time to, to Boca. I have two questions. There's been a, I've heard both sides that the Australian pine trees across uh, where uh, Andros is, they're going to be eliminated. I've heard that they're not. Have you, one side or the other, found if those trees are coming down? The second, the second question, okay. So the issue of the Australian pines, uh, as we understand it, and we have not received the data from the turnpike, there are no landscape plans that are provided. The Australian pines that exist on the turnpike property will be coming down. Some of the Australian pines are on the Widmore property. The response to that question is they may be coming down if they need to take them down to construct the noise walls, but we do not have definitive information about the Australian pines. They have indicated that any of those that are within the right-of-way, and there are large portions of them in the right-of-way, will be coming down. Assume they're all coming down. The second part of the question is, have you been given any indication when the sound barriers would be going up if they would be pre-construction or post? I'll, I'll answer that. Um, we, that's a very specific question that we've asked, and in fact, we have tried to demand that there be something, if this project goes forward, in the construction contract that requires the contractor put those walls up in advance of the construction. The only response that we've got from the turnpike is we will take that into consideration. We have no legally binding commitment as to the timing. Are there any other communities fighting this besides Wilmore? For this section uh, of the project, it goes from Wiles Road to Atlantic. Uh, actually, the most impacted is Sunshine Drive and South Creek, and, and they're going to be very active also uh, regarding this process. The college is going to be part of it too. They have to purchase some land from the college in order to make the ramp work. Um, and they've been attending all the meetings along with Junior Achievement. Um, the express lanes aren't just from Wiles though to Atlantic. They have separate projects for these express lanes and they go all the way from Lake Worth, Lake Worth Drive Avenue. Uh, in Palm Beach County all the way to Atlantic. Uh, the other, they group together the turnpike, the uh, sawgrass exp expansion. They group together the turnpike from Wiles all the way to Hillsboro Drive. That four lane expansion to the west, including the express lanes. And, but they haven't publicized it very much, but there's a lot of impacted residents because of that in Coconut Creek. Um, they've had public hearings for uh, Boca and Boynton Beach, I think. I've read it, I've read it in the Sun Sentinel, or Palm Beach, Palm Beach Post. Um, they didn't have this type of uh, um, it's a response at their public meetings. They weren't as vocal. So, and that's what the, that's what the turnpike wants. They, you know, they want, they try to come in and, and I think really you guys getting those letters from them were really our, our major responses to, oh my gosh, what are they doing? They don't come to the city and say, this is what we're doing. We get a little email saying, yeah, da, 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 you know, no big deal. Um, they put the plans at the Turnpike Authority office, you know, where you have to actually pay a toll to go look at them. <laughs> yeah, by the way, they didn't come to the county, they didn't go to the state senator, Kevin Rader, they didn't go to anybody. No, the, none of the electeds knew about it, the city didn't know about it, nothing, just to let you know. And they might say that, you know, we're expanding it, but they didn't say they're pushing it all out to the west. 
We thought it was the same thing was back in 2006. I would like to know if you have any reference about the problem with openness in human um, health. Because this is something that China is making a, a good research, because until the 80s there was no cars, nothing, and now it's totally a traffic jam. So they have very important reference on this subject on human's health. Thank you, and that's true. That's one of the things that they haven't even reevaluated the environmental study um, is the air pollution aspect of it. They've done the noise pollution update, which is, the numbers are horrific. But um, the air pollution, they said, oh, it's the same. Same number of, actually it would be different because the cars won't back up. <laughs> yes, I wanted to know about the, the Florida Gas and Transmission Company. Is that a private company or is it a state company controlled by the state of Florida? Oh, that's a private company. Okay, the second question is, if they go over that gas line, What's the danger of that causing problems later on because of wear and tear on the, on the road for, for the pipes? That's a very good question. The reason why they are going only to the west is because they gave an easement to this gas company to um, allow them to install these huge gas lines that go really miles and miles and miles and miles. And, but the easement had stated that if we need to expand, you need to pay the cost of moving these gas lines. Where would they well, move it to? Well, they, they litigated it after 2008. The, uh, the Turnpike uh, thought that they would win. They lost. They had to pay tens of millions of dollars to the gas company for uh, uh, construction that they did do based upon requests from the turnpike. Uh, they appealed it. They lost it appeal. They tried the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court would not hear it. So they're saying we're not dealing with the gas company. We can't build to the west. Those lines are going to remain there and be able to, the gas company can go in and do whatever they repairs they need to do because they will not pave over those lines. They will not remove them, it's too expensive. They have to purchase more property to, to, to relocate them. Um, Mary, what is that gas line for? Who uses the gas? Yeah. We have electric in our homes. <laughs> it's, at the, it's to the FPNL power plants at the port. Oh, it's a big, it's a huge gas line. Natural gas. Thank you. Natural. <laughs> My name is Ed Marcus. I lived in 1905 from Judah. Uh, some comments have been made about the noise levels already here and the health issues that are already here. I think we should be proactive and push that as hard as we can. The other thing about uh, tackling the Turnpike Authority, what is the successful success rate been? for the municipalities currently in the state of Florida in tackling the issues with the turnpike. Doing a little bit of research, and, I, and we didn't do conclusive, you know, as to all, all, any kind of, all lawsuits that might have been filed, uh, but it's really difficult to fight the turnpike. They have rules and regulations that they follow. Engineers follow them meticulously, and I think a lot of the rules are unfair. They say that it had, in order to construct a wall, there's so many different things that have to happen. It has to be at least for residential property, 67 decibels or more. The wall has to reduce those decibels by five decibels or they won't do it. The wall has to benefit so many people or they won't do it. Um, and the wall can't cost 42,000 per residence that, that's going to be impacted or they won't do it. And they're called fail things. They have these little check marks. And if you say yes in one, you know, it, it's good. If you say no, it fails. If you say yes in one, it fails. And, no, it, and so all you need is one fail, and they don't even put a wall. And we asked, well, how about if we, how about if we uh, require impact windows for all those buildings that would be impacted? We don't have the authority, nor the, the law states we can't do that. The only thing that they have are walls. So the best thing we can do is try to stop this project. Stop it.
Good morning. I'm Gil Savitsky. I'm the vice president of the village of Eleuthera. We are tired of hearing the trucks zing down the highway, the motorcycles wheel down the highway. Yesterday I was on the turnpike and my wife can attest that I was driving 70 miles an hour and being passed by cars and trucks. This express lane will not help us, it will hurt us. It will make those people that drive fast, faster. We are concerned about the noise. This past week, two weeks ago, a hurricane came in and taught us a very valuable lesson. The noise is getting louder because the trees are down. They'll put that wall up and they'll put the highway through and it'll bounce even further noise into us at a higher level. Most of the people on the ground level won't have the problem. Now the top two floors of every building will suffer. I can also tell you every time we open a window to our apartment, it's a dust storm like we're living at the beach. Those cars coming through will create more. We impeach you, we implore you, please fight for our best way of life. We retired for a reason. This is supposed to be good for the community. Thank you, Joe. Before everybody goes into the West Wing, I really want to reiterate, we all know the impact that this will have on us. The important thing right now is to make ourselves heard. October 17th, we need you at the community center. Everyone that's here in Winmore, even outside of Winmore, if you live in Coconut Creek, be there October 17th, please. We will make every effort to make this easy for you. But we need you to help us fight this as hard as we can. Thank you. Okay, yes, you have a question. Hi. This will be the last question. My name is Joe Dumas. I'm the president of Aruba. I've been taking it upon myself to call up uh, real estate professionals in the area, and they're saying that this particular project will lower our values, our home values, by a minimum of 15% average, which means that the villages by the turnpike are going to be lowered even more. Another avenue we can attack is by getting a class action suit started now to sue the turnpike authority for our lost property values. I did crunch some numbers. Uh, the average price of, the, of an apartment in Winmore is $120,000. If it's 15%, that's $18,000 loss times 5,000 apartments is $11,232,000,000. So I think that's another avenue we can attack. Thank you all for coming. Truly appreciate it. Thank you all.